Hey gang, Mocha Boy here, coming at you with another setup video. Uh, so this is a really interesting build that I wanted to, to go over with you. Uh, a local flyer reached out to me and asked for some help with setting up an autonomous uh, multi-rotor. And um, he's got some experience with, uh, with helicopters and RC and, uh, you know, just, just uh, wanted to get on the fast track to uh, having fun with um, some of the multi-rotors. So we, uh, we exchanged a bunch of emails, uh, gave him a lot of different options for what... Um, for what rigs to go with, especially if this was going to be his first rig. And uh, he settled on the Hover Things Flip Pro model, which, is, as you guys know, utilizes that clean and dirty plate uh, uh, architecture, which makes it really great for aerial video. So uh, I wanted to do just a quick uh, component overview and give you a couple of ideas about some of the things and some of the challenges that, that, uh, that are ahead of us as we're going through and setting this up. Um, you know, as, as we go through each of the parts, I'm going to just do a quick weigh in just to get myself, just to get my bearing straight on what kind of all up weight we're looking at here. But um, I think when all is said and done, we're going to be looking at somewhere north of about 1400 or 1500 grams, uh, even with just the Mobius. But, um, you know, this will be able to carry a gimbal at some point. Uh, we're going to start the, um, I'm going to start over on this side, then move over. So uh, we opted to go for the Sunny Sky V series. Uh, 900 kV motors. Let's take a look at these guys. And I've had really great success with this entire line, um, with the X and V series. And as you know, the uh, the V series are multi-rotor specific, so they don't come with any shafts. And they come with nice long silicon wires. I think these are like 16 gauge. Um, got these from Buddy RC. They're about 25 bucks. Really great value as far as um, motors are concerned. The windings are nice and neat. And uh, I haven't had any issues with the collet, uh, excuse me, not the collet, the, um, the prop adapters, or the bolt-on prop adapters. I've, I've been running the, uh, the 800 kV models, the 1100 kV models on sport rigs. These are 900 kV 2216s. Uh, the reason we chose this is because we're, we're looking for, obviously, power. Uh, but we also, we're also looking for um, lift capacity. So we're going to start out with really small propellers at 8.4. Uh, you know, that should give us somewhere in the neighborhood of about, uh, I don't know, 800 grams of lift per motor. And then um, because these are 900 kV motors, and we're going to be running these on 4S, by the way, uh, you know, we should be able to go safely up to about uh, 9.4 and maybe even 10.4, depending on what the amp draw numbers come at. So, uh, so that's the motors. And I'm really happy with Sunny Sky. <clears throat> um, a lot of the other components here we sourced from uh, UA UAVobjects.com. So we got the pre-flashed Simon K RC Timer 30 amp um, electronic speed controllers. Now, I mean, you know, they're pre-flashed. They were, I think, uh, 13 or 14 bucks. You probably could have, you know, saved a couple dollars, but when you consider how much trouble it takes sometimes to get these flashed, you know, paying paying the extra couple bucks and get get them pre-flashed. Now we did get the 30 amp models just to give us a little bit of overhead, just you know, just in case we wanted to go to uh, to bigger props. So you, there's not that much of a weight penalty from the 20 to 30 amp, but when you're talking about 16 to 20 amp, you know, if your rig is kind of in that that range where you need where every gram counts, you know, maybe go with the 16 amp. Uh, 16 amp ESCs because those are only about 20 grams and these are these top out I think that actually let's see oops this is going to zero out Hang on. okay so yeah that's almost 600 grams there just with the package uh, package alone and, you know there's some hardware in there and some tools but, so that's 620 we can push that off to the side I'm curious to see what these weigh in at okay about 100 grams there and the motors, 80 grams, okay, so that's consistent with what we read on the, on the website. Um, 330, that's right in line. Now, just so you know, from a balancing perspective, you can safely probably go up to about 450 grams on the battery before you start running into balance issues. Um, with the Mobius, we're going to run into some issues. It's going to be a little uh, tail heavy, so we may have to... Uh, plug in a little bit of weight in the front, but if you were running with a GoPro or a GoPro and a gimbal, you know that that would be um, you know this will give you some flexibility to move in that direction. So moving on to the rest of the components, we've got uh, the Arducopter, excuse me, the the APM 2.52. Now this is the updated version of uh, of their system where the GPS. Well, this is actually version two of the uh, the U Blocks GPS, but what's what they also did was they broke out the magnetometer onto 
uh, onto this board. And the reason that they did this, a lot of people were running into issues with um, the APM boards going into panic mode because the magnetometer was getting swamped by uh, very strong magnetic fields. And this was especially prevalent with group, with uh, flyers that were running high voltage rigs. Uh, you know, because you figure you're pumping however many amps through these wires, it's going to create a magnetic field. Um, so it's, I haven't run into too many issues with uh, 3S or even 4S rigs, but just to be safe, you know, we're going to put this as far away from the power plants, um, you know, from the power system as possible to keep those magnetic uh, fields at bay. Uh, as far as the APM is concerned, um, I'm only going to solder in the connectors, excuse me, solder in the connectors that I need. Uh, and we are going to be running this in CPPM mode. Uh, we are going to be running with a, a current sensor. And I mean, I know that I've read some issues with the architecture of this power module. Uh, I didn't want to deal with any of the calibration issues, and I actually have not had any of these problems. I've only read about them. So, uh, you know, we'll keep that. Uh, we'll keep an eye on that and make sure that that's that's not going to present any issues. But typically, I think uh, th there was an issue with arcing and uh, potentially electronics getting fried. Uh, you know, there there's a lot of threads on on the RC timer and APM thread on RC Group. So if you're interested in reading more about that, uh, you know, go for it. We have over here for OSD. We're going to be running the RC timer version of uh, Minim OSD. We'll load this up with the latest Copter version of Minim OSD Extra. I think they're up to like release 700 or 800 or something. You know, really great work there. They've been really pushing the envelope with that platform. Uh, this is just on the verge of us. We're, you know, I, I know that there are 32-bit variants of OSDs coming out onto the market very soon. But uh, you know, it's it's a testament to the to the simplicity of this platform that you know you could eke so much utility out of them. And I've seen these used in every platform. I've seen these used for multi Wii, for NASA, for uh, for CC3Ds. I mean, it's. The formula just works, so you know. Be sad to see these go, but they're just so damn useful. Uh, one of the one other neat thing that we're going to be doing is um, we're going to be using an OpenLRS system for control. So the uh, the flyer that I'm setting this up for has a Turnigy 9X, and uh, this is a drop-in module for for that. And you'll just be able to plug this in. And this is uh, one of the works of art. I like to call them, that I received from Carl, uh, some, which some of you may know as DTFUHF from Canada. Um, both him and Kari Hausho have been pioneering a lot of the, uh, and, excuse me, and, and FPV Slacker, I have to throw his name in there as well too, um, have been really coming up with some great designs for, for open LRS receivers. And you're going to be seeing a lot of these coming out uh, Onto the market very soon. Uh, Carl came up with a really great six channel model, and it's a micro receiver, so I don't have an example of a Dragon Link, but everybody knows how big those Dragon Link receivers are. So it's a full range receiver, you know, depending on your antenna setup and, and uh, you know, how noisy your rigs are, you could do a few miles on this uh, pretty easily. On a multi rotor, we're going to be running into issues just because of noise, but, um, you know, this should be a pretty good setup for that. Now, this isn't the latest version of uh, his. Receiver. The latest version has two more channel, two more pins coming off to the side. But what it also does is, it uh, he he's got um, an inline low pass filter soldered in uh, right between the antenna and the um, RF module, and that's really helpful for for t drowning out a lot of uh, the noise or cleaning up the noise uh, as um, the antennas are picking up uh, control signals. So. Again, a really great design. You're probably going to be seeing them coming out from Hawkeye pretty soon, so keep an eye out for that. And um, for telemetry, we're going to be running 915 megahertz. Um, the 3DR radios just work. There's not really not much to say here. You plug them in, they connect, and, and you're off and running. Uh, for a camera, we're going to be running the venerable PZ0420-600 TVL. Um, again, these are tried and true. Uh, performers. Uh, we picked these up, I believe, from Security Camera 2000, and if you're... I, I know a lot of you are looking at Surveil Zone and the cheaper prices, but, uh, I mean, Sur Security Camera 2000 has never let me down. It may, their shipping may take a while, but, uh, you, you know, if you run into an issue with... Um, with uh, having to return them or anything, they'll take care of you. It may take a few weeks, but uh, you know I've got nothing but great customer service from them. Uh, for the HD recorder, we're going to be running a Mobius Action Cam, 1080p cam. Um, oh, in the future, we'll probably top out with a with a GoPro, and then um, yeah, I think that's about it. Now, as far as video receivers, 
we're going to be running uh, potentially a couple of different configurations. We're going to be running, I know this is empty, but you know, just showing this for illustration purposes, uh, 1.2 gigahertz with uh, OpenLRS control. Uh, but then again, we'll probably use 5.8. Uh, he's got an immersion RC set up uh, already, so both of those video systems will be able to run nicely with um, with the OpenLRS system. He's also got a 2.4 gigahertz system, and I know that a lot of you guys are asking um, questions like, can I use 1.2 uh, gigahertz video transmitters with 2.4 giga gigahertz control radios? Now, I, I know this is pretty common knowledge at this point, but the issue, the reason that you can't do that is because there's typically a second harmonic on 1.2. I mean, 1.2 times 2, what's that? 2.4 gigahertz. Uh, if you put this right next to that 2.4 gigahertz receiver, knowing that that second harmonic is spewing noise uh, directly on your control band, what do you think is going to happen? So, you know, it's important to, it's important to make sure that you're uh, spreading out your frequency, planning out your frequencies right. So, just really quickly, it's uh, 433 for control, either 1.2 or 5.8 for video, 915 megahertz for telemetry, and um, yeah, I mean that should pretty much do it. Now we're uh, for propellers, we're running the carbon fiber 84s uh, from RC Timer. Looking at this rig, <laughs> these might be just a hair too small uh, from you know for from what I had envisioned. But I've got nine fours ready to go as well as ten four multi rotors from the, from APC that we'll be able to give a you know we'll be able to slap on there with no problem. And again, because these are nine hundred kV motors, I'm not going to run into any issues with uh, pumping out enough power. So that's pretty much it as far as uh, software setup. I've got a I've got a build log going up on fpvlab.com if you want to follow along. Uh, there's a lot of setup work to do. <laughs> We've got to flash the uh, flash the OSD, flash the controller, make sure the firmware is up to date on there, update the OpenLRS receivers, update the OpenLRS transmitters, um, you know, tune the camera to manual, get another configuration file on the GPS, and. Um, uh, the you know the ESCs are already flashed, so we won't have to do anything there. I'm going to try to power through this build as quickly as possible, but um, we'll have a couple of uh, interim setup videos to show uh, to show my progress along the way. And yeah, let's let's see where we go. Hope you enjoyed that overview, and uh, stay tuned for more.